and uh, segue to uh, Rob Simmons, who is a NASA Goddard uh, employee who works on a lot of this data imagery that you saw. And he uh, creates these satellite uh, images. So he will be doing a little presentation um, about the actual source material for Goddard Island. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Rob Simmon, and I work at Big Goddard, which is almost 20 minutes that way. Um, if you're in the area, you can come stop by the visitor center sometime. Uh, anyways, I'd like to talk a little bit about why NASA is doing, doing looking at the Earth, and a little bit about what goes into the material that Kenji just presented. Um, next slide, please. Okay, and the reason that NASA is involved in looking at the Earth is because of perspective. Uh, you just get a radically different perspective of the Earth from space than you do from right here on the ground. And of course, we can have a little bit of fun with it as well. Um, next. So this is a NASA launch. This is GOES-N. Um, it is in orbit right now. It's called GOES-13, and it's taking pictures of this area at the very moment. Next slide. Another picture of the launch. And next slide. And so NASA is putting satellites in orbit. Um, so again, so to look at the Earth and to take pictures um, and to collect data. And they've been doing this since, um, basically since NASA began in 1958. Uh, Earth science has been one of our missions. Um, in major programs, we were involved in the weather satellites in the 60s um, and land remote sensing that began in the 70s. This is a satellite named CWIS. Um, it's about 700 kilometers, 400 miles up, um, solar panels, and has been was launched in 1997, has been collecting data ever since. We have a very good long time series of data from the satellite. Um, if you look at a map, you get one perspective. This is very flat. You can see the roads, you can see town names, and national parks, and that's about it. Um, next slide. If you're actually on the ground, this is Mount Etna. So you can see an eruption, but you're very constrained by where you are. Next slide. And if you step back a bit, you know, you get a different picture. You can see much more of the mountain. You can see the fact that it's not just two um, eruption plumes, but there's a series that are coming all the way down the flank of the mountain. Um, but you still only see your local environment. If you move a couple hundred miles away and give an astronaut a camera, they can take a picture of a much larger area, a much, again, different perspective. Um, this is the summit of Mount Etna. You have an ash and a steam plume. You have more plumes coming off on the ridge line. Uh, next slide. Uh, if you're in a satellite and you're directly above it, you can also take this type of view that's more like a map, but instead of being very abstracted, it's actually showing you what's going on at this very moment. So again, the eruption plumes, the ash streaming away from the top of the volcano. Next slide. If you move further up, um, you get a much broader view. Uh, again, here's all of Sicily, here's Mount Etna, a steam plume and an ash plume that are obviously different colors. And this is actually blowing all the way across the Mediterranean Sea and over North Africa. Next slide. And then we can zoom all the way out and see an entire hemisphere of the planet at once. Next slide. Um, next slide. Um, so one of the places that Kenji went when he traveled with uh, on the screen here was to Egypt and the Nile. So this is a view showing the northern end of the Nile River right here. Uh, this is Cairo. And then the Nile Delta extends up here into the Mediterranean. And one of the very notable features of this image in Egypt is that it's really constrained by the Nile. You know, there's the desert, which is almost completely uninhabitable, and the Nile, which is rich and fertile. Next slide. So we can zoom in a little bit, and this is just Cairo. So Cairo is extending all the way around here. Nile again flowing through here. Um, rich vegetation here and here with cities just sprinkled all through it. Um, it's a very, very densely populated area. And then right here, which you can't see very well on this particular screen, are the pyramids. Um, so not only can we get a different perspective by looking from different angles and from above and from a great distance, next slide, we can get a different perspective by looking at different wavelengths of light. In this case, we're using infrared light. Uh, vegetation is red in these images. And you can see, you know, it get a much um, sort of more quantitative idea of how much vegetation there is instead of just, oh, it's green, it's vegetation. But with this, using this technique, you can actually say, well, it's, this has 
um, a certain amount of vegetation, and another area has less or more. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, also, using some shortwave infrared mixed in with the near infrared, um, you get a lot more definition in some of the barren areas. Next slide, please. Uh, we're also observing all the time, so we can see at night as well as during the day. This is the Great Bend of the Nile. Uh, this is Luxor and some of the other cities that are sprinkled through. And you can see, again, it is completely constrained in the Nile Valley, and there's nothing outside of that. Next slide. Again, we can pull back. And here is Egypt and the Nile River right here, just a thin ribbon of light in the otherwise empty Sahara. And if you skip to the last slide, just a H down or home or end, I guess. Okay, well, we'll get to the end. Um, so this is another perspective. This is a uh, photograph from the International Space Station of either a sunrise or a sunset. Uh, and if you'd like some more information, earthobservatory.nasa.gov. We publish a new image every day feature articles once a month, once a month or so. Um, and hopefully you can learn a little bit about our planet. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. I also just really want to thank uh, the Smithsonian and NASA for, for making this show happen. Um, this is really at the, at the cutting edge of, of the nexus of art and science, and this is just really fantastic. I'm so thankful. Thank you. And thank you all for coming.